you ask me questions about dewinterizing, food prep, mold, and is the little guy crowded when two people are inside it? But these are just a few of your inquisitive questions that I'm going to answer in this video so you can learn new and interesting ways to camp like a pro. Hi, I'm Randy, and every Thursday I share tips and tricks to help you make big memories in your small camper. Deb Zakara 9017 asked, I live in upstate New York and I just bought my first camper ever. It's a 2018 at Little Guy Max. Yes, you inspired me. My question, when I picked it up, it was winterized for me. When is it safe to open it up for the season? Big congrats, Deb, on your purchase and welcome to the Little Guy Max family. I gotta tell you, I get really excited when it comes time to dewinterize my Little Guy Max so I can only imagine how excited you are. The most critical factor in determining when it's safe to dewinterize your Little Guy Max is to determine when there's no risk of upcoming freezing temperatures. You should wait until the risk of a hard can't say that. You should wait until the risk of a hard freeze passes in your area or where you're going to be traveling. The risk of freezing temperatures is the damage that it'll cause to your water system. Your fresh water lines, the fresh water tank, the water heater, and the waste tanks can freeze. And this will cause them to crack and even break your water pump. It's just something that you don't want to deal with because of costly repairs. The best way to know when this magical day is going to occur that you can safely dewinterize your Little Guy Max is to keep an eye on the 10 day forecast. If temperatures aren't predicted to fall below freezing, you're probably safe to proceed. Just keep in mind that if you are surprised by an unexpected cold snap, you might need to add antifreeze back into your drains and your pipes to prevent damage. Tessa555 asked me this question. Can I use my camper if it dips below freezing by a bit? but is above freezing most of the other time. I gotta tell you real quick before I answer this question that I'm loving your questions and connecting with you so much. I wanna do another community video, but with a twist. I wanna hear about your RV mishaps so that I can include them in an upcoming video. I'm talking about everything from your silly and your goofy RV mishaps to your more serious RV mistakes. This video is going to be both entertaining and educational for all of us. And I'm gonna tell you how to share your RV mishap with me at the end of this video, so keep on watching. Okay, Tessa, to answer your question, can you still use your camper if temperatures dip below freezing for a bit? And I guess that depends on what you mean by a bit. I read that it only takes 24 hours or less of below freezing temperatures for pipes to freeze. Personally, I'd be uncomfortable if the temperatures dip below freezing for more than a few hours. With that said, I go winter camping in my Little Guy Max all the time, and I live in Minnesota. But when I do go winter camping, I just don't use the water system. So if your camper is winterized, you can still use it. Tessa also asked this question, how do you pack and plan food for a longer trip? We're RVing for 10 days this summer, the longest for us, and I'm not sure how to pack away so much food, including fresh produce. I cook everything. Unfortunately, I'm not a great cook, and especially when I'm camping, I like to keep my food prep really basic. A typical dinner for me would be throwing hamburger, chicken, or steak on the grill with a bag of prepackaged salad. If I'm going to be camping with electric hookups, I take my camp cooking laziness one step further. If I have leftovers from home, I bring them with, so all I need to do is zap them in the microwave. <laughs> yep, not fancy, but super easy. Unfortunately, I know that my answer wasn't probably really helpful for you, so I've got another tip for you, Tessa. Watch this video by Turner Max Adventures. Christy <laughs> loves to cook, and she's the queen of food prep and packing for long trips. I'll leave a link to her video in the video description below. While cooking isn't my thing, I do love eating a good homemade meal. So maybe, just maybe, you'll take me camping with you sometime, Tessa. Tessa also asked this question. Is there a way to secure everything without putting it away? 
when we're moving from one place to the next. I've never used it, but people rave about quick hold. This is museum putty that was inspired by California earthquakes to prevent antiques and collectibles from falling off shelves and shattering. You place it underneath what you want to stay in place and it creates a suction-like grip. And when you remove something, it won't damage the surface. I'll leave my Amazon affiliate link to Quick Hold in the video description below. Another really great idea is to use hooks to hang towels, keys, hats, and more. I prefer command hooks because they also won't damage your walls. Another good tip is to keep things in storage bins. And I also recently added netting to the side cubbies above my dinette. Not only does this prevent things from falling out of them when I'm traveling down the road, but it tripled my storage space. I did a previous video about how I installed this netting. So if you wanna learn more about this, I'll leave a link to that video in the video description below. Barb MMH asked, is mold due to high humidity an issue in an RV? Yes, you're right, Barb. Humidity in an RV can cause mold, and this can be a problem. Mold is like tiny little invisible seeds, and if you don't clean them up, you can get sick and it can cause damage to your RV. And because campers and RVs are often closed up tight when they're not being used, air can't circulate. And this is the perfect environment for mold to grow. In fact, the bedding in my RV would often get wet due to condensation. And this made me really nervous about mold growing underneath my mattress. Because my mattress sat on a hard wood surface, there wasn't any way for air to circulate underneath my mattress. If you watch my videos, you know that that's why I insist installed the Froley sleep system because it lifted my mattress up off that hardwood surface so air could circulate underneath it. And it is absolutely positively my number one RV upgrade that I've made to my little guy Max since I purchased it five years ago. If you want to learn more about the Froley sleep system, I'll leave everything you need to know in the video description below. So here's a couple of really quick tips to help you keep moisture out of your RV. When you're not using your RV or it's stored, keep a window or two cracked open. Air ventilation is key to prevent mold from growing. And also do this when you're using your camper. Always keep a window or two cracked open, even when it's cold outside. Also open any rooftop fans or vents that you have when you're cooking or you're showering to help get that moisture out. And always, always, always open your refrigerator door or keep it ajar when you're not using it. One time I forgot to do this and then the next time I went to open my refrigerator, there was mold everywhere. Oh my gosh. This was such a mess and it wasn't fun to clean up. And this is probably one of my silliest RV mishaps because I knew I should have propped open my RV refrigerator door, but I just forgot. Marine7653 asked me this question. How do you pack, cook, and live in your trailer differently when you're alone than when you're with your husband? How crowded does it feel with two people inside? That's a really interesting question, Maureen. And five years ago, when my hubby Tom and me bought our little guy Max, for the first two or three years, I would never have considered solo camping or taking my little guy Max out and camping by myself. Now I go solo camping a lot. And each and every time I do go, I'm getting a little more confident and I'm having a blast, but I don't pack differently or cook differently when I'm camping alone versus when Tom's with me. But the most significant difference when I'm camping alone is the location. Tom and I, we like to camp in more remote and off the grid locations, but when I'm alone, I wanna camp around people. I just feel more comfortable and safe when there's other people around. Regarding how comfortable the little guy Max feels with two people inside of it, I wouldn't wanna live full time in this small space but for weekends and numerous two to three week camping trips, the little guy Max has been really comfortable for us. There's not a lot of room for both of us to be doing something in the kitchen area at the same time. So Tom and I, we just have our little maneuvering system. When somebody is in that area, maybe cooking or getting dressed, the other one of us will sit at the dinette area or just go outside. Fantastic Dreamer asked me this question. I bought my little guy Max when it was in the $35,000 range. I see now that they're in the $50,000 range. I worry that my little guy will break or wear out and I can't get a new one in the new price range. 
When will you consider buying another little guy or something else to replace it? If you buy something else, will you regret and miss the little guy? Thank you for those great questions. And it's understandable to be concerned about the rising cost of all RVs, including the little guy, Max. But if there is some good news to be had, when and if you go to sell your little guy, Max, and the prices continue to rise, then the value of your camper will probably rise too. So when you go to sell it, you could end up with more cash in your pocket. Regarding my decision to buy another or switch campers, that's a question I just can't answer today because the little guy Max fits all my needs. But if someday the little guy Max no longer fits my needs, I'll explore all my options at that time. And would I miss my little guy Max if I did switch campers? And the answer is absolutely. This camper has allowed me to experience a whole new world that quite frankly has changed my life. And I've been blessed with so many cherished memories. I want to encourage you to continue to enjoy using and having adventures in your little guy, Max, and not worry about the things that we just don't have any control over. When and if the time does come to consider a replacement, you'll make the right choice with no regrets and be excited for the new adventures ahead of you. Okay, are you ready to share your RV mishaps with me so that I can include them in an upcoming video called Mishaps? fails and quick fixes. Here's what you need to do. In the comment section below, share a fail, a mishap, or a mistake that you've experienced with your camper. Briefly tell me what happened, but also let me know how or what you did to fix it. Like I said, this can be a silly or goofy mishap or a more serious mistake. So the more people that share the stories will make this video more entertaining and more educational. And so we can all learn from each other. Also, I may pick a winner for this silliest mishap and a special winner for the person who shares the most useful tip to help us all avoid making a future mishap or mistake. So please share your mishaps with me now and leave them in the comments section below. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, you're going to want to do that right now. Hit the subscribe button along with the notification bell so that you get an alert when this video goes live. You're not going to want to miss this upcoming video. Well, that's a wrap and I can't wait to hang out with you again next Thursday.